there. Welcome back. This episode is, as I mentioned in the last one, but in case you haven't listened to that one, uh, going to be about imposter syndrome. And this was requested actually a while ago. And in all truthfulness, I hadn't really identified that most of the work I do with people is to connect with that imposter voice inside and rewire it and help people to really appreciate who they are. And then once I started thinking about it, I'm like, actually, that is what I do. And I'm not a huge label person, but man, is this effective. So I felt like, okay, let me talk about this and help to bring a little bit of light to it, but also give some specific ways that you can address the imposter within you. We all have one in there. And that you can then use it maybe to create and understand what your own unique wiring is, uh, your talent and your brilliance that you brought into this physical body from your soul level and continue to expand upon with every experience. So like I said, a lot of people experience this and often can have it be almost like a dirty secret that they're carrying. It's something that they, um, I don't know, keep buried and that they don't necessarily allow themselves to hear. And it's because the subconscious puts it in the back and says, oh, no, 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 no. We are not going to go there. We're not going to look at the BS I'm giving you through learned experiences or through the wiring or messages that we've had. And it's Within a lot of people, especially I find those who have garnered a certain level of success in their life in the professional setting. Now, I consider myself to be a success coach. However, my definition of success is what's your definition of success? If your definition of success is life balance, if your definition of success is being able to give back, if your definition of success are degrees, and a certain level of financial freedom, then freaking tastic. Because success ought to mean individually to us what is important, not necessarily what society might say, oh, they're successful because of this. And I'll tell you what, a lot of the people I work with have multi-million dollar businesses, are doctors, are psychiatrists, are very successful inventors, celebrities, And the messaging there then that we've been led to believe is that they're successful and they've got it all together. And that's so freaking wrong because that means that it doesn't allow for people to be people and to have experiences and have emotions and to recognize that everybody's growing. You know, they may be a well-known judge, but there's still a person in there. And I feel like that's been part of my success as a coach, because when you come to me, I don't see what you do or what you bring into the world as your whole value. It contributes, but I don't see that there. I see, does this person like themselves? Do they feel comfortable in their own being? Is there a messaging in there that's holding them back from expressing their whole self. It's not about their W-2 or their followers on social media or any of that, which boggles some people's minds because I have no freaking clue if you are a celebrity or not. (laughs) I just don't know. Um, There's a couple that live in my neighborhood and I was explaining this to Mike when he's like, how can you not know who they are? And I said, that's not how I'm wired. I am not wired to think of what you do first. Now, part of that is because one, it's never been part of me. But the second part is I see the pain that people have in holding that facade for other people. And I will not contribute one moment to that. I need to be a safe space that people come to where they can say, Vicki, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I'm supposed to be out here saving lives, to which I usually remind them if they're a doctor, you have saved lives. You, like that's evidence, right? And we'll talk about that too. But this phenomenon of imposter syndrome is, although not a psychological diagnosis, 
it is considered to be, as far as the coding goes, it is considered to be a psychological phenomenon. And anybody who's ever watched The Muppets, I'm sorry that that song is now in your head. Phenomenon. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're welcome. So there are a few themes that are common with imposter syndrome. And this may even help you because for me, I was thinking, oh, I've got limited belief systems. I have, you know, some emotions that I still need to work through and all that. And then when I really started thinking about this imposter syndrome and how I work with it every day in some context with someone, with every client, really, I was thinking, wow, <laughs> well, I've got that little bugger within me too, which actually helped me connect and be like, this is true that all of us have it. Now, there are likely to be some people who don't and maybe they have their own wiring and you know what? Good for them. Good for them as long as they're not a jerk. So a few of the ways that you may identify, again, let me preface this before I say the next part. This is not to label and to come up with something you know, cool, or I'm going to put it on that. It's to help you identify, do I have this existing within me and how can I ease it, maybe make friends with it, and then have it be part of my toolkit. So this isn't like the excusometer. Oh, I have an imposter syndrome. That's why I can't show up. I'm an introvert. So that's why I can't talk to people. I'm empathic. That's why I can't go to public places. Nope, 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 nope. I am not launching another category for people to grab onto, to use as an excuse not to grow. What we're doing is identifying what may be in there that's ready to come to light. Okay. Now that I've said that, do you spend a lot of your time in your head thinking that you're a fraud? That any minute now, someone's going to figure out that you don't know what you're talking about and you've just been BSing your way through things. Um, perhaps you feel like you're not as bright as people think you are. Uh, that, you know, despite receiving compliments or feedback or even job reviews, you still feel inadequate or maybe even incompetent. And these made the list when I was going over what are the characteristics I see, <laughs> because in myself, uh, not feeling as bright as I, as others think I am has been common. And I know that that's from some messaging I received as a child, but I also know because I've dealt with my own decision to not pursue college and to you know, have a family and then it just didn't go that route. And by the time there was time, I was like, meh, not interested. So I was buying into the idea that if you didn't have a degree, you couldn't be as bright as the other people out there. And then I started working with people and I realized that's not true. So if your answer to any of these brief questions or inquiries, which is really what a question is, um, you are likely experiencing imposter syndrome. And, you know, not that there's any great big studies, but there are estimations from therapy uh, records and from, you know, contributions and, and then actual, some actual studies, yes. But I don't know that they're peer-to-peer -peer reviewed, so I'm not going to quote them. Um, but there, it's estimated that 70% of people experience some sort of imposter feelings at some point in their life. And this really interests me because you've heard me say, if you listen to other episodes, that your soul chose you to come into this lifetime to experience and embody uh, physical activity and interactions and to really learn because, you know, the contrast that's here helps us learn. One day we'll learn through complete joy and all that, but for right now. So I don't know how you could be an imposter when you chose you to be in. I do understand how the limiting belief systems get in there and the neural pathways. I understand the psychological aspect, but my very literal brain sometimes wants to say it's impossible for you to be an imposter because you are you and no one else can be you. <laughs> so 
the appreciation of that may help with the human condition of imposter syndrome. So I just want to lay that right out from the beginning that no one else can be you. So when it comes to being your unique self, last episode, if you haven't listened, October 26th episode, go listen to that one because your own uniqueness is why you're here and to experience, to discover rather. So you can't be an imposter to yourself. You may feel an imposter in the world and that's what we're going to cover now, but had to throw that soul thing in there. If you feel um, that you have a difficult time accepting the success, put quotes around that and refer to what I said earlier, that you've experienced in your life. So perhaps you are someone that has the multiple degrees that has uh, reflection from your coworkers, from maybe your patients or from the business world that they appreciate your knowledge and everything. And yet you still can't acknowledge your own achievements that sense of being a fraud, a fear of being caught. I was working with one of my clients who is a doctor in um, an ER situation, and he was talking about how almost every day he has this sense of panic that he's not going to know something. And I listened and then said, well, I don't want a doctor that pretends that he knows everything. I want to know that if you're going to do a procedure, you've trained on maybe a dummy <laughs> or something. But the times when I've experienced my own doctor at, you know, different doctors even saying to me or nurse practitioners, I, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. I felt like they really listened and I felt like they were going to go seek something. And I also felt like it was pretty cool that I got to be part of their learning so when I asked him, well, do you want to be that pompous ass that pretends that he knows everything or do you really want to help people? Um, and he was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And we acknowledged the terrible training um, that doctors go through and the beating up they take to their own psyche uh, as being a contributor to this, but not knowing something means that you're still here and that you're learning and that your brain is viable and wants to learn. So a fear of being caught not knowing something can be mitigated by admitting, I can't possibly know everything. And then you can, you know, maybe parse out the fact that self-doubt is normal. You know, that self-doubt is also a protective thing. It's the thing that if you're getting too close to the edge of a cliff says, perhaps you should back up. If we don't have that, we <laughs> are, are are going to uh, come to uh, the end of our contract even quicker. So self-doubt is normal. Um, the feeling of uncertainty about your skills or your strengths, um, that's all normal. And that helps us to grow. And it helps us to seek more information, to want to expand. For some who have higher degree of imposter syndrome, the sense of self-doubt can reach an extreme point and have an adverse effect of their self-image. Um, so some, there are common threads that we find in the imposter syndrome world. It's helpful to look at these, and I'm going to list a couple. Uh, certainly not going to be able to identify all of them in a podcast, but knowing them it can help you evaluate or maybe help a friend if you notice it in a friend and then alleviate the negative effects or unsupportive effects of uh, this condition. So one of them, the shouldn't, I shouldn't fail. I That goes right up there with I should know all of it, but I shouldn't fail. And I'm going to ask you not to shit on yourself because the pressure that is there, the tremendous amount of pressure of not failing in order to avoid being found out increases the imposter syndrome feeling. And it's not lost on me that the irony of this is success often plays a part in that feeling because if you've achieved a certain level of success and you feel 
the pressure of responsibility and also visibility, like others have seen your success, they might expect that of you. Uh, Maybe you could go listen to the episode on disappointment as well, because that's on them. But it may lead to an inability to enjoy the success that you're in because it kicks off that idea that if I've achieved success in the past, well, then I have to be successful at everything. So if you're a successful baseball player, it does not mean that you have to be an Olympic swimmer. It, they don't correlate. Um, so I shouldn't fail um, can be debilitating um, and keep people in a very chronic state of panic and anxiety. And often people will downplay and say, well, it's, it's because of luck. And I used to use that expression of, well, I'm just lucky that I love the work I do. I'm blessed to do the work I do. I am blessed to do this work, but it's not because of luck. I show up every day to do this work and to learn how to build a website and to understand all the mechanisms of business so that I can help my clients. The amount of research that I do when I'm not in session, it's not because of luck. And I see this in a lot of people, you know, (laughs) that which we deal with on our, in ourselves, we can see in others. Thankfully, there's a tendency to credit success to luck rather than ability. And I feel like that's like when somebody's complimenting you on something, it's, when we say, oh, it's all because of luck, what I started practicing a few years ago was that idea that if someone was presenting me with a gift, I wouldn't say, oh, no, I don't want this thing. I decided I would receive and and trying to ha- say it without a double negative, but I I didn't want to negate their gift of a compliment. So it's not a fluke. It's because of ability that you have the level of success you have in your life right now. And that could be that the dishes are done. That's an ability. You learned how to wash dishes and you learned it's a priority. So the kitchen doesn't stink. It's a defense mechanism that can mask the fear that they may not, or we may not be able to succeed next time in whatever the next thing is. Being found out to be a fake there's a thought process that others are deceived into thinking that we're capable or adequate or BSed into it. And that, you know, all of this stuff kind of dovetails together in that if there's a fear of being discovered or not knowing, or the whole thing will become um, unraveled, the I'm a fake, there can be a belief there that they know enough or you know enough to cover your ground and then maybe go back to your office and panic. And I see this when I'm working with someone, especially if they want to shift careers. And one of the exercises I ask them to do is to give me a list of transferable skills. Now, if you're listening to this and we haven't worked together yet, you're going to know my, my evil plan. But that transferable skill is concrete enough that it allows me to wiggle out the list of what I do well out of someone if they may have a difficult time with that. So when I make it a transferable skills, because we are completely going to line this up to a career or business or something that you would like to be in, but we need to get clear about that. And I need to know what are some of your skills because I can intuitively see how amazing you are, but I don't know every little detail of the work you're doing. So give me that list of your transferable skills often becomes a list of what someone does well and what they actually believe in themselves, but they haven't gone far enough to give themselves permission to believe in themselves. So then when I have people read it out loud and they hear it for the first time and the light that goes on, oh, it's just amazing (laughs) to be able to witness that and to feel that they get their own value, that they have skills. And then you get excited because, ooh, this is possible to shift careers, um, to go into a different area of work and still take my skills with me. We don't have to start completely over. And this quiets a little bit of this imposter syndrome because you can imagine if you were jumping different uh, tracks of career or income producing. We're not meant to have careers and stay in something for 30 years. We're meant to explore and learn and expand. Uh, 
um, that could be, it could freak you out to be like, nope, I better just stay where I am. And I feel like that's why people often stay in positions they don't even like is because they don't know they have transferable skills because the imposter is being a bit of a jerk. And this often comes up in, I don't deserve a promotion or, um, they must be making a mistake and got it all mixed up that I'm not the one that's talented. And I've worked with enough companies to be able to assure people they're not going to be promoting you if they don't see some skill set yet there. Yes, there are times where there's no workforce and somebody gets promoted because of that. But then I see that as an opportunity to show them what you've got. And then there's often a downplay of whatever they've created or whatever success, or maybe you trivialize your success by saying it was an easy task, that that was just um, no big deal. Now, often what is no big deal to us is actually some of our brilliance. When someone says, oh, that's easy, I pause them and say, okay, I hear it's easy for you. And I'm not fluffing your skirt here or trying to puff up your ego, but I would like you to hear that it's actually not easy for all of us. There's an app for that. I created an app for developing intuition. I created an app that will help you connect with community. And I created an app where you can take courses at your own leisure and then attend live events with myself and the rest of the amazing people that are connecting within the Vicky B app. You can find this app in Google Play. You can find it in the Apple Store as well. I do hope that you head on over there, download it. Yes, there are in-app purchases, but there's also plenty of content that is complimentary. Thank you so much for being interested in this, and I hope to see you within the app. I have done this. I actually caught myself doing this with Mike's mother this weekend when she was, I was telling her some of the website stuff. And she's like, I just don't understand how you do all of that. And I started to say, oh, it's just easy. I love it. And then I said to her, I do love it. And I've put so much work into understanding what goes into building a website. I don't want to do it for people, but what I'm happy to help people, (laughs) Uh, what goes into it with the systems that go into it, that I've created an ability to kind of fly through it where it might be difficult for others. So somewhat allowing myself to accept her compliment and acknowledge to her, thank you. I appreciate that you recognize, you may not know any of this and you recognize that this is an undertaking um, because it does feel good to be acknowledged. Um, So what can you do to mitigate the challenges the consequences of imposter syndrome? Well, you can remind yourself every day that there's always a choice and a chance to improve yourself. And it's normal to not know everything. When you first learned how to drive, unless you were one of those fortunate ones that their kids, their parents threw them on a tractor at a very young age on a farm and you just went with it and then you got the muscle memory. Oh, so brilliant. So brilliant to teach kids young (laughs) Um, with the safety of it. But unless you were fortunate enough to have that experience, most of us were freaking out behind the wheel and you learn to do that or you learn to tie your shoes or you learn to navigate the transit system. Um, Remind yourself every day that it's normal to not know everything because if you knew everything, it would be boring and you likely croak because you need to be on to your next lifetime. So perhaps you can talk to that voice when it shows up at first identify that voice is showing up, but then talk to that voice that I actually do deserve acknowledgement, success, financial remuneration, and give a little bit every day until you truly feel that you deserve the success that's been showing up. This is also contributing to your light body and the quantum field and manifesting and creating because without a little bit of that um, belief in self, it's, it's really hard for things to be magnetized towards you. So if you want to think of this as a term of manifestation, hey, go for it. I don't care how it gets in there that you believe in yourself as long as it gets in there. 
Um, and some of that is identifying that when these feelings emerge, that you take a step to change the routine or change the situation or change the messaging. Awareness is always our first step. You can't change something until you're aware of it. And once you become aware, you can then get the help you need to proceed to make some changes. Okay. So be kind to yourself. Actually, that's another thing I have on the paper here. Be kind to yourself. Uh, It's no mistake that your soul chose you. So brilliance and doubt coincide. It's just like you can't have fear without, you can't have strength without vulnerability, vulnerability without strength. They go hand in hand. So be kind to yourself. Um, And if you think of each thing that hasn't worked out as a learning opportunity, I don't really believe in failure. I think failure is when you don't try again, when you don't get up, then we can talk about, I failed to move forward or whatever, but failure is a, f- a tricky word. It can be a triggering word. And even if something didn't go as you wanted it to go, that's not a failure and it doesn't make you a fraud. It makes you human. And rather than punishing yourself and reliving with negative thoughts over one thing, do a little bit of reframing, change it up and use it constructively. There are so many inventions that did not come off the first, you know, hundred times that people tried. (laughs) If they had stopped, you know, would we ever have airplanes? Would we have sticky notes? I mean, sticky notes came about because somebody actually screwed up the formula for something else they were making and realized this is really handy. So thank you, Post-it guy, uh, for sticking in there and really trying and giving it one more shot. So use it as a kind of like your GPS in your car, recalculating, (laughs) rerouting. And sometimes it can help to talk to someone else that understands the way you feel. I mean, if there's 70%, you can look around you. And even if people are acting like they don't have this particular characteristic that they're working with, it may not actually be true. It may be that they have it and maybe they're afraid to share it because it they'll feel like a fraud or they don't want to be found out. So you have that in common and you can talk about it rather than holding it in. They, having an accountability partner in business, this is important because you can talk about oh man, I had all these things planned and I spent an hour scrolling on my phone and didn't get them done. And there's some forgiveness that can happen in that communicating. So if you're interested in it and reframing, it will also shift your neural pathways in your brain. And then you will find that you bump into these challenges less and less. And listen, We're all going to have those moments where we feel less than sure about ourselves and feel out of your depth and you'll begin to doubt yourself. However, I really believe that's the soul calling you forward saying, no, it's okay. I've already been there. You kicked this one out of the park, hit it out of the park. You did a great job. You need to trust me. I I know that you can do this. And Now you need to actually follow through with it. So consider the reframing of it and being honest. I think it's really important to be honest that I I feel less than capable right now. I'm afraid I can't do this. And then recognize, but that's not all of who I am. This is what I'm feeling in the moment. And then perhaps go get some evidence to the contrary because it, uh, it definitely is part of our expansion to experience that of which we've not been before. I mean, it's the definition of expansion, isn't it? So when it comes up, you can have, you know, the autoresponder on your email. You can have an autoresponder of, no, no, thank you. That's old thinking. I am not an imposter. I can't be an imposter. I'm me, the only me. I may not know exactly what to do in this moment, and that's okay because there's information. I can find someone who knows. And if not, you know what? I'll do, I'll use all the skills in other areas of my life and other situations and bring it forward. So you're going to make some mistakes occasionally. 
and you may feel you may feel bad about that, but being in the practice of acknowledging truth and forgiving yourself and recognizing that any of the accomplishment points that you've reached in your life have been there because you found a way around, you didn't pitch it just because something got a little bit challenging um, and you did it incrementally, hopefully, with some encouragement along the way. And so rather than focusing on each small thing, uh, look to what you accomplish over time. And that could be you started walking 50 steps and then now you're doing a quarter mile. Look for the successes in your day because that will reassure the um, subconscious that, no, we actually have this. Thank you very much. Um, and it won't panic as much and bring that imposter out of the closet. So like I said before, finding some help. If you find it difficult to do that yourself, you know, perhaps you work with a therapist or a coach uh, or an accountability partner. Maybe you need to hire help in your business. And maybe it doesn't need to be a 40 hour position where you offer benefits. Maybe you hire someone part time and acknowledge that, you know what? Not only can I not do this alone, I don't want to. Again, having someone hear you uh, is a, a, it's a pretty good reality check. I am so grateful, so grateful to the friends I have in my life who are not going to BS me, both when I'm limiting myself. And when I'm shooting too high sometimes, um, and I'm going to feel disappointed that I didn't get something done, uh, that perfectionist thing, or the, I can, I can do 84 things in a day. Why not? And realize, nah, it's just actually not possible because I also belong to this Newtonian world and <laughs> don't live in the quantum field, even though it feels more comfortable for me there. So I'm so grateful to the relationships that I've developed where I've said to people, I actually do want to hear what you witness of me, what you think of me, and where I'm not showing up in my best self. And I'm grateful to both Mike and all of my friends who do that for me, uh, just like I do for them. You know, clear is kind, direct is kind, and if feeling some self-doubt, it's really helpful to have people around who are going to not sugarcoat it, uh, but also not tell you you're everything in a bag of chips when you inside don't feel like you are. So if you struggle with the feeling of self-doubt, um, you are not alone. You are not alone. It's somewhat hardwired in there, um, and but it doesn't have to be the prevailing programming. So you can take each opportunity to embrace your knowledge, your skills, your capabilities, and start accepting them. And with the right amount of emotional support from others and yourself, that fear of accepting success and allowing yourself to be seen will dissipate. Um, and one of the things I ask people to do is look for the evidence and that's part of that list of what are your transferable skills. Look for the evidence. I need to hear evidence. Um, is there any evidence that you're not doing your job well or you're unqualified? Has someone reflected that to you? Because if they have, well, then we need to look at training. And we need to look, is this your best uh, area of expertise? Um, uh, is it not where you and your soul want to be? Well, then we have to look at that, right? Because if you're doing a poor job at work, you don't really want to be there um, or you don't want to do a good job. And maybe being somewhere else is in your best interest. I've worked with companies where I've had to suggest that they free up somebody's future because the person just did not want to be there and it wasn't in the best interest of the person or the company. And then when I talk to the person whose future is being freed up, and find out that they have an interest in something else and, you know, help them to align there because there's no doubt that we need, you know, some kind of exchange, some kind of financial backing uh, to be in the world that we're in. But that doesn't mean that we have to be miserable in what we're doing. And so if you look to the 
messages that may be saying you're an imposter. I mean, don't be walking into a an operating room thinking that you can do what the guy or the woman who has done so much training can do. Don't do that. Um, but you can look to the evidence of where you've already succeeded. And if you were doing a crappy job at work, hopefully someone would say something. Um, I've also experienced that where I am looking at the owner or the CEO going, how come nobody said anything to this person? They suck at their job. Uh, well, we just don't want to. Well, tough. You're not helping them. You're not helping your company. You're not helping them. Someone needs to say it. I'll go say it. It can be helpful to write out your achievements and see them on paper. I am a big fan of a writing implement in your hand and a piece of paper. There is a connection that gets made with your brain and your brain believes it more than typing it in your phone. So we so often focus on what is not true, what is negative, and we discount what is positive. Most of the people I have met in my lifetime are not going to get such a fat head that they can't walk through the door because they gave themselves a couple compliments. And perhaps the last way to do this is to recognize that you are believing or buying into a story that your mind is telling you. Our brains, our minds are very good at coming up with a scene worthy of Hollywood. And you can ask yourself, what do I get for believing this? How is it serving me that I'm not good enough? How is that benefiting me anymore? Maybe it did at one point, but how is it benefiting me anymore? And, you know, I've had to have some direct conversations with people when I'll say, you are actually paying me to help you grow and yet you're not growing. It's got to be serving you in some way because otherwise you're just giving me your earned money for something that you're placating your brain or your subconscious. And I won't be part of that. I I won't. I mean, yes, I have bills to pay, but I also have to be in integrity. So if you're buying into a story that you're not good enough, what are you even doing here? Let's find out what you can accept in this moment. And then let's build on that. You don't have to buy into every thought your mind tells you. <laughs> you know, there's so much where it, something will fly in and you can be like, nah, that was complete BS. And if you can have some humor around it, it helps a lot too, to be like, oh, nice one. I have been known to say to myself, impressive, Vic. That, that was impressive. We should maybe do a screenplay about that one. Because the more humor you can use, it's a higher vibration than stress or anything. And you can also recognize that you might be a little bit scared to show up. That's fine. That's normal. But living in a limited experience, that's not going to help either. Uh, so it, if you make a mistake, think of it as Hollywood, right? Where it's a mistake. We're going to take 285. It doesn't make you incompetent. It means that you're growing. And it means that you have something else that you can expand upon. Try to get excited about that. I feel like, you know, each time I don't know something and I learn something else, I feel like my brain has done a couple sit-ups. And although I don't like them physically, I like that my brain does sit-ups. And just look at the having to redirect or figure out a different strategy as feedback for what you can do differently next time. Um, you know, if you're riding your bike and on just had this experience a couple weekends ago, there's really loose gravel. You have to pay attention. And if you don't pay attention, you wipe out. I promise you the next time you see loose gravel, you will pay attention because that is a terrifying feeling. So I was working with uh, a client and we were talking about the imposter syndrome and how it was affecting her. And because I love words and my brain just naturally separates them for whatever reason, I, I just love the study of language. And all I said to her, and I gave her this task, and I'm going to toss it to you. And I will include a link in this of the example I made for her. And yes, there will eventually be a class on this after websites ready to go on how to work through and have some fun with this imposter idea. 
So my challenge to her in the moment when I saw this intuitively was to come up with an I'm poster. So imposter, because I know this is audible and it's sometimes challenging to get this in your head. Imposter, if we divide it between the M and the P, becomes an I'm poster. So much like a vision board, I encourage her to come up with an I'm poster. What is it that I already know about myself? I am what? I am kind. I am smart. I am neat. I am a being of the universe. So her I'm poster is to help her identify what she is in that moment, who she is in that moment, and how she wants to feel in future moments. So that when the imposter voice is coming up, she can look at it and go, actually, I have an I'm poster that I'm going to listen to. And that's where I'm going to focus right now. So I will put a link to the uh, document. Um, and in the newsletter, it'll just have the picture of it that maybe you could create that idea too. And or look forward to the course that I'll create. Uh, it'll be an easy one, one of those downloadable self study things. But I know I like being guided. I like step-by-step directions, and it will also help you to shift some of your brain pattern so that you don't have to visit this every time something new comes up because that's the experience of being human and even going into a next lifetime. New is good. New is good. Learning what you don't know is fantastic. Accepting that you don't know will power you in a way and bring a peacefulness that is indescribable. So thank you. And I hope this has helped you with any doubts you may have, given you some ideas, or maybe helped you identify, yeah, I do have that little bugger in there, don't I? Sometimes it's called the critic, but imposter syndrome is bigger than the critic. Um, And it's important to be able to identify it and call it something call it on its imposterness. And you could even say, you're an imposter. You need to leave. Thank you. I'm so grateful you're here and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at, at Coach Vicki Baird, and you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at vickibaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.